Hi, I'm Natasha Tanous and I have the pleasure of speaking to Sesk Fabregas here today at his home. Sesk, um, it's a great honor today to be talking to you about leadership and football, as well as your life when you're not playing. You are one of the finest midfielders of your generation. You have played for three of the biggest clubs in Europe, Arsenal, Barcelona, and now Chelsea. You were also captain of Arsenal at 21, and you're third captain also of Spain. What are the leadership qualities? What are the leadership skills that you bring to a team, and how do you build a team? The leadership uh, skills that the captain must have uh, are always to lead by example. That's the, the main quality a captain uh, must have because they, he is the one that everyone follows. And uh, when you are a young player especially and you look up to the captain, to the most experienced players, you always look how they behave, how, how they attract the, the pressure, how they, how they deal with it as well. And uh, I think uh, it's not always about talking and making speeches, it's also to lead on the pitch. By example, in terms of in difficult moments, you always have to get your team together and to make them believe uh, that uh, reaching the top level and to, to succeed, you need to be together and be strong in difficult moments, I think is the, the, the biggest part a captain have to have to make. But you also um, played under the greatest managers. Is there something that you learn from them that they have in common? <clears throat> the leadership of winning, but the, also the mentality of to, to take the best out of all the players. This, okay. is not, this is not easy. When you have 25 players and you need to play 11, there is 14 players that are not happy, that are going to complain, that are going to knock at your door, why am I not playing, I'm better than the other one. So it's, yeah. not, it's not easy and this, yeah. this skill, I think, they managed it always very, very well because they, they always knew when to, when to play the right player at the right time and always how to make everyone important and, and feel everyone that, that sparkle that you need inside of you to, to, to make you alive and to, to be competitive in every training, in every, in every game, even if sometimes you think, oh, I'm not playing, I'm not uh, maybe good enough, but they always took the best out of the players, which is for me a fantastic skill. So, tougher question. Uh, it's been said that Mourinho's rigid style of play was one of the reasons why uh, some players were disillusioned. Is there any truth in that? No, I don't think so. Um, it's always been said something like that about about Jose, and uh, I don't agree at all because uh, I've been inside, I've been part of it. Uh, he loves winning, uh, he loves uh, playing and playing well. He will never tell you uh, like people uh, think uh, he does to, to the players, or oh, you have to defend, you have, you know, you, you, you have to, as they say, park the bus and then play counter-attack. He never said that. Uh, and he never trained it this way. He always trained with possession of the ball, having the ball, attacking, playing fluid football. Yeah, of course, sometimes you are winning and you are playing a difficult game and, and he plays his cards, you know. He, yeah, he, knows, he knows how to deal in, in every situation and that's why he's one of the best managers in the world. So speaking um, of internal crisis or changes of coach, actually, um, how do you keep a team united? How do you keep it together and keep going? Yeah, well, I think this is a, a big part of the togetherness that the, the team shows in a, in a crisis or in a difficult moment. Uh, and that's another moment where I think the captain needs to show up. Mm -hmm. And once again, as we were saying before, lead by example in terms of making sure that everyone is on the same page. Do you think you would go on you would be interested once you're done playing to coach or to be in management? If you ask me right now, yes. I think in my mind I, uh, I have plans of uh, taking the badges and, uh, and study for it and, and it's something that motivates me for the future to, to, to be able to do. <coughs> but uh, at the same time, I'm still very young, and yeah. you know, I'm I'm and only focusing on anyway, the right? football, and I hope that I still have many more years of playing. But I can see myself in the future trying. Yeah. Do you actually have an example of a tough moment you had, or a tough decision you had to make, or maybe something that just, you know, were really, was really difficult for you? When... Well, actually, when they made me captain, it was a very difficult uh, situation because I was only 21 years old, and it yeah. was already the, the coach came to me the day before making the decision because something happened 
with the, the other captain that was there before and the, the, the coach Arsene Wenger decided to, to finish uh, with the captain and he wanted to, to, you know, to name someone else. So the day before he came to me and I didn't expect anything at 21 years old. Yeah, I was already playing for four or five years, but uh, it was a, a little bit shocking for me when he came and he said that he wanted me to be the captain of the club. And I was like, well, for me it's an honor, obviously, but I'm very young. There is older people than me, more experienced. And I don't know how they will take it that a, a young player is their captain. So it was already a big test for me and you know, I took it. Uh, everything went well. All, all of my teammates helped me. I must be always grateful for it. And uh, I just tried to do what I could. Uh, but that's what I said, you know, bring the team together uh, with the help uh, of others. And, and from there, learn every day and lead, lead by example. So can you tell us about the pressure and actually how you overcome the pressure to actually perform? Well, um, in a way, I've been lucky uh, when these moments came because when uh, the penalty came against uh, Italy, uh, it was a big moment for Spain. Probably, uh, I don't know if, if it was the, the, the biggest moment because it was the, 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 the moment where everything lifted for, for Spain, everything changed. That's yeah. what they say because it, Spain used to go out all the time quarter final. Yeah. And in that moment, we were playing quarter final against Italy, who normally kicked us out all the time on penalties. So everyone thought that's our moment, you know, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to, to be the one to, to be shooting the, the last penalty. I was 21 years old and I didn't even know. The manager came to me and he said, you shoot the, the fifth penalty. I mean, OK, no problem. But I didn't shoot a penalty since I was 14 before. So wow. it was like a big pressure, but it went so quick. You get an adrenaline rush. Yeah, right? when, when it was an adrenaline like yeah. shot. And also you don't have time to think. If you tell me two days before that this will happen, OK, I will not be able to sleep for two or three nights. But it happens yeah. so fast that your brain, obviously, you want to win. And, and I think also I am very relaxed in, in under pressure. I, I, I think I can deal with it quite well. But when you have Buffon in front of you and 21 years old and you are winning with your you're going to kick the, the last penalty, I must admit that uh, it wasn't it wasn't easy, but uh, fortunately it went, it went all very well. And uh, now you're now at Chelsea. Does Arsenal still hold a dear place in your heart? Yes, forever, forever. This, there's some things that will never change. Um, there's many things uh, said and, uh, about me, about Arsenal and, and stuff like that, that That's obviously nice. I don't... I don't really care what people think about me anymore you know it's just about what i feel towards them and arsenal will always um, be the, the the team that believed in me the most i was a young kid uh, 16 years old uh, playing for barcelona but for the barcelona academy where it's very difficult to to reach the first team uh, spot and uh, and Arsene Wenger especially, and Arsenal Football Club gave me, I would say, everything. Without them, I wouldn't be a World Cup winner, European Championship winner, and I would not have experienced all, all of this that I'm doing in, in my life. So I will always forever be grateful and uh, yeah. So what do you do in your private life? I just uh, like to rest, be with my, uh, with my daughters, with my wife, with my family when they come. And, uh, and just uh, relax and stay at home and, and chill and, and have fun with them. Now it's that time of the interview. I'm going to ask you quick fire questions. You have to answer very quickly what's on your mind. Okay. If you weren't Cesc Fabregas, which football player would you want to be? Easy, Lionel Messi. Oh. Uh, who was your toughest opponent so far? Uh, Lionel Messi. Which style of football do you prefer playing in? I like fast football and uh, entertainment. Uh, Premier League is the best for me. What's the best thing about being a successful player? That you do what you love the most since you're a little kid. Could you improve something in your game? Oh, so many things. <laughs> Could you improve one thing? <laughs> uh, my tackling, my, my defending aspect of the game, yeah. What's your favorite away ground? Um, between Anfield and Old Trafford. 
you consider playing in China once you retire from European clubs? Listen, once I retire from Europe, you never know. My my plan uh, would be once I don't think uh, I want to play or I can't play the football in Europe. My plan at the moment is to go to the States, but you never you never really know. What's your best quality in private life? I'm quite patient with uh, in general with life, with uh, difficult moments, difficult situations, with with great moments as well with uh, euphoria. I'm, I'm always very patient. Could you improve something? Yeah, I could improve so many things. Like when we lose a game, uh, I take it very personal. I take it very inside of my heart so much. So, um, and I bring it home, you know, sometimes I pay it with the people that I love the most and I think this is unfair. So I would like to improve in that. What do you look up to? My family, my wife, my daughters, they, they are the ones that I I admire the most because they are the ones that make me the happiest in this life. Who's your biggest inspiration these days? No, these days and forever, it's not about who is my biggest inspiration, what's my biggest inspiration, I and mean, that's football. Football is my biggest inspiration. What's your favorite evening? What's the best plan you could have? Well, the best plan for me is to order some sushi at home from a place that I really like, and then um, go down to my, to my bed and uh, put TV, watch a movie, serious, and, uh, and just uh, eat some popcorn. What's your favorite TV series? Uh, I love Homeland. Tell us something that no one knows. Well, number four is very special in my life and I've yes. always been around it for some reason. I used to live in the house number four. I was born on the fourth. I, uh, when I was a child in the school, I was the F was always number four, I don't know why. And, um, well, I go out uh, on the pitch when we go to warm up, always the player number four. If someone goes behind me or in front of me, I'm going to pull them because number four player is me. And the fourth player going out on the pitch when there is the, the players walk out on the pitch, I'm always going out on number four. And uh, it's always uh, something related uh, about number four my, for my life, I, I believe in that. Is there a question that you do not like to be asked? I don't like uh, to be asked uh, questions about defeat or after a defeat, negative questions. You know, when you, when you finish a game that you've lost or that you haven't played well, uh, some journalists always try to, you know, push it too much on negative and uh, and questions that I, I don't like to be asked. It's the same as a trader. Trust me, when we have a loss, we don't like to be asked about loss. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cesc, for being here and welcoming us in your home. I really appreciate all your thoughts on leadership and football, as well as your life when you're not playing. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.